In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom brushes, just like these, in Affinity Designer on the iPad. And if you stay till the end, I also share some free brushes with you. As always, we start with a new document. Since we want a black background, I put a rectangle over the whole artboard and color it black. After that, you can start by designing your brushes. Since I'm going for a geometric pattern, I'm going to enable the grid. I chose the standard grid with a spacing of 100 pixels and 10 divisions. After that, I drew the outline of my grid pattern brush element. Since the grid lines are not that easily visible, I uploaded a picture of the pattern. You can find the link to that in the video description. After you finished the outline, you set the fill color to white and disable the outline. Then you select the pattern element and duplicate it. You then place the copy to the right of the pattern so that it aligns perfectly. You can create some more copies of this element by just pressing duplicate again. After you created a couple of these elements, you combine them into a group. This group will then be saved as a PNG. To do so, select the group and go to the menu on the top and then click on export. Here you have to set the area to be the selection area and give the picture a name. I call mine Greek pattern. After that, you have to increase the height of your object to ensure that it won't get pixelated if you size it up later on. I chose to set it to 1000 pixels. Then you have to choose where to save it to. I made a folder called Brushes for that. When you're done with all that, you can really start creating your own brush. For that, you go to the Brushes menu and add a new category. You then go on the three line menu again and choose New Textured Intensity Brush. After that, you have to choose the picture that you want to use for your brush. I'm going to choose the Greek pattern that I just created. You then have a lot of adjustment that you can make and play around with. But for the beginning, I am just choosing the body to be repeat instead of stretched. When you click on OK, you have created your first own brush. You can now draw whatever you want with your new brush. It is also possible to use them as an outline for objects as the ellipse or a rectangle, for example. For that, you have to make sure that the fill color is set to none. With this brush, you can now do whatever you are normally doing with your brushes. You can, for example, change the color or you can apply effects, for example, a 3D effect or an outer glow. With this method, you can create however many brushes you want with whatever pattern. I created some more Greek pattern brushes and also some swirl brushes and a brush of a branch with leaves. Another thing that you can do with the brush is to adjust the size of it. When you try to do it right now, nothing will change. For it to be working, you have to go back into your brush settings. To do that, I'll create a copy of my brush so that I don't change the original brush. You then choose this brush and click on edit. Here you change the size variance. I chose 75%. When you now choose this new brush, you can change the size of the stroke. When you change the pressure profile of the stroke, the width will change accordingly. You can see this in this example here. That's it. You can now create your own brushes. And thanks so much for watching. I hope I could help you with this. And as I promised, I uploaded the Greek pattern brushes. The link for that is in the description below.